okay, here we go with uh, part three. It's going to be a lot of parts, and I'm sorry. The phone rang in between and stuff, but I just got to... I just got to I just got to respond to this hit piece that Chris Matthews put out here. So here we go. Continuing on. Still in its infancy, the Tea Party is a leaderless resistance without a cohesive message. Most adherents say they are worried about the size of government. Without a cohesive message, how about follow the constitution, private property, gun rights, uh good monetary policy and limited government like it used to be and how it's supposed to be that's the cohesive message abolish private on the federal reserve private property gun ownership rights free speech which you guys really have a problem with unless it's you the one, or unless you're the ones talking uh, there's your cohesive message buddy some just don't like the president plain and simple still others go much further they see government tyranny at work we don't like living in fear we're fearing our government instead of the government fearing us. Oh my God, that guy must be racist too. He must hate black people. He don't. He don't want to be scared of his government. He wants the government to be scared of us. What a concept, Chris Matthews. What a concept. The range runs from casual talk of secession and nullification to just understandable anger during hard times. Even President Obama has taken note. I think that there's a broader. Uh, circle who are legitimately concerned about the deficit and last year a bunch of the emergency measures we had to take in terms of uh, dealing with the bank crisis uh, uh, you didn't have to take that measures uh, Barry there, there were unconstitutional you're a constitutional scholar uh, you didn't have to take that measures you can let the banks fail who are they they're not too big to fail because if my business fails uh, you're not going to come bail me out are you you haven't done anything for me, actually. Uh, you know, bailing out the auto industry uh, fed that sense that things are out of control. The auto industry made a huge mistake. They had poor management, just like our country does. And that's why they were going to fail. And the, there's no reason for us to bail them out. And how come all the, the some of the bailout money went to their bonuses? So, so they run a, co a company into the ground. They run their banks into the ground, basically on purpose, if you look into it. And the American taxpayer payer has to bail out private owned businesses. Uh, which constitution is uh, your boy Barry reading, Chris Matthews? I'd love to see it. Must be the, uh, the new wave edition of the constitution. And I think those are folks who have legitimate concerns. Jesse, you want orange juice? Mother of four, and a Puig has a typical Tea Party story. I have. Oh my God, look at this terrorist. She must want violence. She must be racist. Never been politically active before. A little over a year ago, I was raising my family. I was driving my minivan. I was having conversations with the neighbors about changing diapers and what to make for dinner. Love you. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Please call me later. Oh, well, bye -bye. Like many in the movement, Anna is a political novice. She was motivated by what's happening with the economy. You're a political novice, Chris Matthews. And the government's response. Morning. How are you? Give me kisses. Her call to action came when she saw footage of then-candidate Obama talking to Samuel Wurzerbacher, a.k.a. Joe the Plumber, about Obama's reason for raising taxes on the wealthy. But right now, everybody's so pinched. That business is bad for everybody, and, and I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for everybody. Spread the wealth around. Uh, I'm sorry, so if I earn my money, and I earn it with my own sweat, you get to spread it around because, again, where in the Constitution do you derive this authority? You swore an oath to preserve, protect, and defend, just like every cop who does unconstitutional stuff, just like every judge that does unconstitutional stuff, getting sick here. Obama said to Joe the Plumber that it was okay to spread the wealth around, quote unquote. It's not okay. That really bothered me. Like I said, it just brought back memories of something that I had seen before in a different country in a different time of my life. Anna was born and raised in Brazil. She now lives in Pennsylvania. 
she didn't think the Republican Party had the answer she was looking for, so she joined forces with another local woman, Anastasia Babilski, who had formed a group called the Kitchen Table Patriots. Good this for them. This was just a protest about the stimulus at first. So it wasn't really a group. It was we were planning a tea party in April. After we did that, it was kind of like, where do you go from here? You know, they're having the town halls. We were organizing that. It just never stopped. I was told not to make copies. In the last year, the two women's lives have changed dramatically. Okay. They now spend hours on the phone and email, organizing protests and running workshops, educating their neighbors. This one with Dick Army's Freedom Works. In order to win in 2010, which is so crucial to this fight, we need to try to find candidates that are true conservatives. What we're looking at is the Democratic Party. They don't represent us. We need to find a whole. There's of another criminal. The Republican Party. And another criminal. Has and another been criminal. Crazy on spending. And, and another they, criminal. Honestly, don't really represent us for the most part either but starting the third party is not the answer we don't have the time for that so i think our she's right home is the republican party and we need to send a loud and clear message to them right now that they need to put out candidates that actually represent oh speaking of which now that i remembered uh the maine the state of maine republican party has adopted a, a new platform which is in step with the constitution and what most of us, 90% of us, want, uh, Tea Party patriots, so on and so forth. Uh, I think Sarah Palin, Bush, McCain, all them neocons, if they looked at the main GOP platform, they, they would uh, shit their pants. I mean, it's everything they're against. Then conservatism. It's sometimes noted that the right wasn't so angry when the previous administration doubled the national debt when Republicans generally controlled the congressional... Uh, the real right was upset about the last president. These uh, guys that finally woke up when a Democrat came in office, uh, they weren't really paying attention. The things were good. Uh, everyone, anyone could get a loan, blah, blah, blah. We were fighting terrorists. Now they're waking up to it, and that's why you're seeing such an influx of patriotism. Spending. I definitely started feeling that things were moving in the wrong direction under the Bush administration. Sure, I would prefer to have President Bush over President Barack Obama, but I definitely don't think no, that he same represents person. me either. You know, it's the lesser of two evils type of thing, and that's what the Tea Party movement is all about. We are tired of the lesser of the two evils. We want representation. The real Tea Party, anyway. The Tea Party took its first step into electoral politics in November 2009 in a special congressional election in New York's 23rd District. Many on the right, including Sarah Palin and Dick Armey, decided that the Republican candidate, Didi Scozafaba, was insufficiently conservative. They advocated for a third party candidate, Doug Hoffman, causing Scozafaba to withdraw and throw her support behind the Democratic candidate, Bill Owens. Owens won, but this was just the Tea Party's opening salvo. In January 2010, the Tea Party grassroots rallied behind Scott Brown, the come from behind Republican candidate for the late Edward Kennedy's Massachusetts Senate seat. With his pickup truck and neighborly appeal, Brown rode the populist wave against the establishment, even though, by right wing standards, he's a somewhat independent Republican. We shouldn't have to go to Washington every time to, you know, have a, a, a cup to, to get handouts from Washington. This time, the Tea Party's efforts paid off. They delivered a stunning blow to the Democrats' supermajority in the Senate, winning a seat the Republicans hadn't held in almost 60 years. In his victory speech, Brown warned Washington that his election was just the first of many upsets. Throughout this race, we had the machines scared and scrambling, and, and, and for them, it's just the beginning of an election year filled with many, many surprises, I can tell you that. Coming up. Here we are. The Tea Party. Just who's in charge here? We're not going to sit down and shut up. Thank you for... Who, again... Get just who's in charge here, and he immediately shows Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin is not a Tea Party person. She does not stand for what we stand for. I'll be back, guys. Stay there.